Hey y'all. Hey. So it is Homesteaders of America Garden Tour time again. For July. Yes. Yay. You had to say July because I don't even remember what month it is right now. <laughs> um, no. So. The garden has exploded since the last time. It's awesome. You all were here with us. Yeah. And we haven't weeded in a while. Yeah, life has been a little. The crazy. last couple of weeks have been crazy for us. Yeah. Um, we did manage to make one picking of beans of our. Uh, what are these called? The red peanut beans and Antiguas. Antiguas. That's the ones I was looking for. So the red peanut beans. They were pretty much done. We, um, they kind of. I think they were the ones that were affected the most by the flooding, and yeah. they grew and they produced a batch, but the plants were all yellow and it was. They were a little. They, they were, were dying little out. And they, <laughs> that's okay and they weren't our favorite we ate some we canned some and then we, we ate some and nobody was in love with them like yeah. they were okay but they were not our favorite beans so i think the consensus is that we will not be growing them again no. um we like the antigua uh well we didn't taste them but we no. assume we like them yeah we but think we'll like they them. canned well they look good they are loaded and need to be picked yes. again so that'll we'll be do, tomorrow yeah we'll do that and do some more canning um and then we are getting a quarter, provider, a quarter pound of provider bush it's beans. A provider or contender? Provider. It's provider. Okay. Or contender. I don't know. I don't remember. I'd have to go back and check my messages. Anyway, we're getting a, a quarter pound of bush beans. Green bean bush bean seeds. From Seeds for Generations. We're going to get them soon from yep, them. This week. Um, and we're going to come back through and plant. And then we also are getting cabbage plants from them because they have a bunch of extra plants and yep. we didn't start any yet. So, hey. We're I have back. yet to really successfully grow cabbage. So, I am so excited because we I grew love a couple years ago. Years and years ago yeah. that did well. But other than that, they've never really I've since good. learned um, we want to try to get some row cover um, because it looks like it works really, yeah. really well. You check out VW Family Farm. They used yeah. it this year. Uh, I think it was their first year of using it like that. And yeah. they had. Great, great success. success they were really excited about it so we were gonna and i love it. kraut i mean just it is delicious yeah, and it, kraut. we can put cabbage up for a long way just fermenting it for kraut and yeah it'll last for a long time so yeah and, uh, so, so here's the beans the plan is look here this, but this is this the antiguas beans. and look at them they are loaded and they need There's, to taste like yeah <laughs> but life so anyway yep. all the plants are like that all the rows a friend of jenna's gave us these melon plants you describe them because i don't remember exactly what they are we have a couple of moon and stars and then we have um i believe some cantaloupe i'm not positive i had tags on them but they're all kind of buried now and then on the end there we have kajari melons which i've heard a lot about and i've been wanting to try and never got to try them so not only do i have them there to try but then if we love them can save seeds so yes super super excited about that then we put corn in this is where our radishes were we put corn in and you can see up it is doing great. I mean, like growing really good. And then down it's here. It's just sweet corn. Gen was a country gentleman. Country gentleman, yep. Sweet country gentleman, okay. sweet corn. We came in and put this cattle panel. For more cucumbers. Put cucumbers all the way across. Derek planted this side. I planted that side. Same seed packet, same everything. depth, same everything. And my side sprouted three. Yeah, I don't understand <laughs> that, but we're going to put more in over here because we still have time so cucumbers in succession are great yeah we actually made some pickles the other day we got five and, uh, quarts of dill pickles they're good we probably need to pick cucumbers again but like i said picking day is going to be tomorrow because it was not on the agenda for today we don't have time but so jack if you want to pan oh, around I here i was going to tell you oh, we put on. in on this other side i put uh planted dill but it has not come up we have had a drought we went, what, two weeks with no yeah. rain and scorching temperatures. We watered the garden from the creek some, but it's been a little rough. We have had two rains since then, but again, we're back to being dry. I also put in a row on the other side of those beans. We put in calendula. It's really late for them, and I don't, they haven't sprouted yet. Don't know that I'm going to get any. It was one of those afterthoughts. I realized I had the seeds, and I was like, oh, man. So we threw them in, but we'll see. We yeah. shall see. Hopefully they come up um so but, yeah here's all the green bean seeds um plants. and like our plants i mean yeah well there's seeds now there's big old green beans yeah but they are just loaded, loaded. thick with beans it's so exciting that's our staple and we're really yes. beyond excited we are we are super so all these are beans excited. all the way to right here and this is where our potatoes are and, obviously, yeah. crazy. obviously the sunflowers and the zinnias we have an interruption 
yeah. to the potatoes because <laughs> I found a beautiful red zinnia. My sweet friend, an older lady down the road, gave me those seeds. Okay, so, those are beautiful. So all the sunflowers they planted are looking great. Some down of them even have blooms on them down here. Wow, we have a ton I mean, of some of the stalks are this big around. So huge. But um, as you can see, our potatoes are starting to dry up a little bit. And uh, we'll be digging them before long. This is kind of just a mix of potatoes, all different kinds. The white potatoes, white russet potatoes, some, some type potatoes. of red potato. We just went to Kroger, y'all, and bought organic potatoes. Stuck them under the cabinet, let them start sprouting, brought them down here and planted Honestly, them. Honestly, I think a bag was supposed to be for us to eat and we forgot about them. So then when we found yeah. them, we were like, oh good, more potatoes for the garden. Exactly. And that's, but we the, did. We always, that's the cheapest way we found to do yeah. potatoes. I found, like I said, I, I found organic seed potatoes at the store and they went at like $10 and there were six itty bitty sad excuses for seed potatoes <laughs> in the box. And I was like, let's go to Kroger. Yep. So here's our okra. As y'all can see, it is growing very well. We've actually got a couple pods off of it so far. They're just not, they, they'll start cranking out the, the okra pods here very when, soon. When our okra starts, um, what I usually do with the first ones, because it's not enough for a meal, especially for us, I, I, we pick them small and I throw them in with dill pickles or refrigerator pickles and then just pickle just them. Pickle I don't know if you like pickled so okra. Good. Usually people with pickled okra are either like, oh, it's the best, or that's the most disgusting thing I've ever heard. Yeah. I was in the, oh, that's disgusting camp until I actually tasted it, and then I was like, it's the best. Yeah, it is really and good. I love, love pickled okra. Yeah. I love okra in most types, and even raw okra is actually really good, in my opinion. Not everybody loves it, but. Right. It's not my favorite. Um. So some of our squash are. This, there was water up to like right here. So. Those five down there died off. They did not like all the two, water have been struggling and I think they're giving it up. They're yeah. not doing much. I don't know, our squash is kind of iffy this year. We've got a few, come here Jack. We got this one that's ready. It's We've got some one. squash ready to Let me pick. show you how big that is in comparison to my hand. It's a big old fat squash. Yeah. So we'll come back and get that here in a minute. Yeah. There's a couple more that might be ready too. They also on. don't do well with, the, they need water. This heat is really yeah. getting to them. We have it's, some quick neck ready. How and I don't think it's vine borers killing them, is it? No, I think it's the temp the, the it's the water inconsistency. It's over water, under water, over water, <laughs> under water because of the... It's the weather this year. The weather. But hey, you, but, do, you go with the flow, right? The cucumbers obviously need some water. They've getting They're a little wilty. wilty, but... They've been doing extremely well. Um, we picked our first little picking. I was going to do some about half a gallon. Probably I had enough to do refrigerator pickles. And I kept not doing it, not doing it, not doing it. And then the kids were like, please just let us eat them. So I was like go for it so they ate that and then we've canned five quarts yeah. uh, and then we ate one quart but yeah, i know you're supposed good. to wait like what at least a week so they get fully infused with flavor we just ate them like the next day <laughs> but that's yep. okay and then we've got quite a few so we'll come back through and pick um i have some in the fridge that are going to be ready so we'll have a good batch to pickle again yep. so that'll be good and then down here your tomatillos so the tomatillos and these are are these the ground cherries? I think so. Because I think the pineapple tomatillos. So these are actually the ground cherries, and they are, have a lot of them on them. They're loaded, but nothing is ripe yet. Oh, one fell and, off. And it's we've not never had it. Right, but it's it's fell off. So I don't Try know. I see. Taste I think it. Is it rotted? I had a worm in it. Oh. <laughs> okay. So anyway. I almost touched the worm. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. But yeah, these are getting pretty loaded. Um, they've grown uh, tremendously. They're huge. Oh yeah. I don't guess they really needed to be trellis. We put them down here because we ran out of. Well, th we didn't want to cut the trellis off, so we just yeah. kind of extended it. And we did the cucumbers down there, and then we we're like, well, it'll be fine. We we'll just yeah. We just put it here. It works. <laughs> it's not impeding anything. It's just just there. There. Um, our peppers, my goodness, they have shot up, and we came out here the other day, and they were all like laying on the ground. The roots were starting to come out of the ground because they um, needed the support, and so we real quick supported them the best we could that night. Then you were able to cut more. Support. Yeah, we had these pickets so. from years ago because I save about everything. Yeah, it was an old staircase. Then picket. we had scraps of cedar that we ripped down into one by one inch but sticks yeah, for stakes all for kinds it. Of peppers. Look at this thing. Oh yeah. That's a poblano. Is it? I'm pretty sure this is my poblanos. Nice. Yay. And these we all started from seeds. The only one I didn't start myself were the our uh, chili peppers. Oh, and, uh, I need a zip tie this because this one here I, is falling over. 
Well, I started and none of my seeds germinated, so we did buy nine chili peppers from a nursery, local nursery. But um, and we've been picking chili peppers. I haven't had enough to preserve yet, but we've been eating them, uh, putting them in burritos. In burritos. <laughs> yeah, and we eat, we eat a lot of burritos. We eat a lot of spaghetti and a lot of burritos because we have a lot of mouths and those go, go far. a long way. <laughs> go a long way and feed everybody in our reasonably more, priced. Re, yeah, reasonably priced. So okay, these look really good. I'm excited. Yeah. Okay. Okay, on to the next thing. Tomatoes. I feel like I'm giving a field trip yeah. presentation. Here's your chili peppers. Yeah, the chili peppers have just gone they're, crazy. Yeah, they've got lots of them right here, too. Lots of chilies on them. Oh, yeah. yeah as y'all can see. We're going to let them get a little bigger than we've been. We've been picking them small to kind of encourage the plants to keep on put producing more and putting out. And I think we're at a good place with them to let them start getting a little bit. I'm going to let them go until they start to turn. Yep. They're, they look awesome. And here's your pineapple coming to you. Yeah, pineapple and Emma got one off the other day that was actually ripe. It's mushy. And uh, there's a bunch under there. I don't know if you can see. And we have Josiah's prize five color, Chinese five color. The Ever. one and only. That's one and only, yep. It was my last seeds too, so we it have about, to save seeds from that. It was literally about this tall when we planted it. It right. was so tiny and it I survived. Mean, all right, these four plants, I want to see their bell peppers, but our little mini blind tabs that I wrote on the Sharpie faded. Um, by the time I realized that they were faded, it was to the point where you couldn't actually read anything, so I'm not 100% sure. I probably could go back on a video and see what they are, so that's what I'll have to do. Uh, for whatever reason, they're just short. They have not done much. I don't know. We'll see. I'm not sure what that was. Firecrackers. Some of these letting off firecrackers, but uh, yeah. anyway, our tomatoes are wild and out of control. I was keeping them nicely groomed and pruned, and then in the last two weeks, life went crazy, and they're tomatoes went crazy but we're going to get another um trellis across here these two don't have they only have one trellis up so far so we're going to get more up so i can start tying them um so we started out with this surveyor's stretchy tape and we've decided that we don't like that because it stretches too much <laughs> <laughs> and i came out and a bunch of my plants had stretched to the point where they were laying on the ground yeah and so i right now have um been using twine and then we also have used zip ties i haven't used zip ties on these because our zip ties are not very long and these bamboo is really wide so it's not enough space to zip time um but the twine that we have this what is it sisal string sisal twine this, yeah sisal right loop. here i'm just tying it loosely and that's been working fine um for this year for what we're doing yeah but we're getting really heavily like look at this we need to trellis this really bad we've got we'll have to do like, that tomorrow loaded. we've got the stuff I believe these ones are my Amish paste, I'm pretty sure. Those are nice. Yeah, they look really good. I have Amish paste and San Marzanos through here, which are pasting. Um, although we actually use everything. When we make sauce, we don't use <laughs> specifically pasting tomatoes. We try to use as much of those as we can, but we just make it we'll much We use whatever. whatever we have. What is wrong with the sunflower? Look at it. It's, it's like growing. We might need to support this. It's growing out like way over here. That's yeah, I don't crazy. know what we the need deal to is with it. Probably do something about that. Prop it up. Yeah, because it will fall and then it will crush my peppers. Those are bell peppers, aren't they? It will crush my peppers and that will crush my heart. I'll be really sad. Yeah, my bell peppers. I haven't had good bell peppers in several years, and I think these are some bell peppers here. And I like to preserve them and use them. So and they're super expensive to buy organic bell peppers in the store, so we don't usually buy them. Yeah. <laughs> so but they're doing look at that pink zinnia. It's really pretty. Check that out, Jack. And then all these sunflowers. All right, and then look at these sunflowers. Check out, here. come over here this way, Jack. All of the sunflowers looking beautiful. Their fireworks are a little weird up there. I'm not sure what they've got going on. This is my first one that started growing the first tomato. I notice out here it's all wonky but it's pretty awesome it's getting I bet it's huge. gonna taste good oh i bet it's gonna be delicious it's eggs nice. and a little oh. bit of salt mm. i don't want eggs with my tomato. <laughs> i just want to eat my tomato with a little bit of salt mm. goodness we've got a water baby look at these tomatoes over here i know we'll have the water pumped from the garden unless it rains we keep pump thinking it's gonna the, yeah pump this it is... from the creek we keep seeing storms come up on the radar and they literally go all around like torrential downpours all around us like within a couple miles down the road and here we're like well, a little bit of that rain over here would be fantastic. It 
sick right about now. <laughs> but these but. are these are lack of water, right? Oh yeah, they need yeah. water bad. The leaf curl and wilting. Yep. But they'll bounce back once they get water. And again, with labeling, some of our tomatoes are labeled, some are labeled incorrectly because they got mixed up. So we're we don't care. And the labels we're just that happy are, to have tomatoes. The labels that are there are not legible anymore. So yeah. some of them are and some of them aren't. Like yeah. that that's supposed to be great whites right there. So yep. we'll and see. then black crim or black yeah. prints. Most of them we'll be able to tell just because we've grown them so much that we'll know what the variety is by looking at it. But some of them that are just like your basic slicing tomatoes, I don't know that we'll be able to tell the difference between all of them. But yeah. that's okay. That's why I like to grow weird tomatoes because then I know what it is because it's this weird tomato that I grew. So here's the corn. kind of weird. We did get a giant hornworm the other day. The kids were excited. It was huge. It was like that big. But yeah. This is our mature, maturing corn. It's doing oh, very well. Getting little corn little baby cobs corn. on it. So look at and the they pollen. Like they're yeah, they're pollinating. You can see the pollen yep. all over them. The tassels. That's cool. Yay. And then over here. We came through. Over here, we came through in, in some of the bare spots where there was no corn. We put some more squash plants. Yeah, they need all water. of this. Yeah, everything's got to be watered. I'm gonna have to get down here and water, water tomorrow. These I used two, to, be able to walk between these rows. Yeah, can. they're sweet potatoes, which is something we are super excited about because we have never successfully grown sweet potatoes, nope. and I think we are this year. I think so. So. This is really me. exciting. Yeah, they look awesome. I'm excited about that. Really. So really. up through here, we've got a few more spots where there's a few uh, more squash plants. Yeah, they're all um, yellow squash or zucchini, depending on what. We didn't label them. We just put them in. Yeah. Again, I have video where we did it, so um, I think I do anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we, it'll be a surprise. Once they produce, we'll know what it is. Yeah. I'm pulling some of these weeds out. Yeah. Jenna's pulling weeds and then throwing them on the fence that we just weeded and clean up. <laughs> you know. So anyway, we're getting just a couple more squash plants back here on the back side. There's one, two, three. Yep. Yep. So and yeah. some weeds. We've we've kind of the corn. Done. We've just kind of let it do its thing. Yeah. It, it outgrew the weeds, and once it did that, we just kind of let it go. It's so hard mm -hmm. to get in there and keep it weeded out. This one has two corn. Along with there. everything else we've got going on. So. Yep. So here's uh from this angle, Jack. Get up here where you can see. I hide in. The yes. It's really tall. It is. It's way tall. Or I'm really than me. short. Or both. It's like over eight feet tall. That's crazy. Yeah. So anyway, that's that's our garden. Um, we oh no, you know we need to show them our melons. Oh yeah. So that's the garden down here by the creek, and our, we did our melon garden um, up on the hill, and I can't remember if that was in the last video or not. I know that we showed it in another garden video, but I'm not sure if that was with the Homesteaders of America collaboration. So if you um, are here from that. And haven't seen it we'll go show it to you yes all right we are up at our melon garden we put down landscape fabric because this is just plain yeah. land. yeah and then we burnt holes well you can see right here because this one didn't come up we burnt holes um like that and then planted we transplanted most of these melons we transplanted these are lupa gourds and pumpkins that we direct sowed seeds in and they're rocking it out they're going crazy we've never grown lupa gourds before and we have four or five plants here um again everything desperately needs water but we can come up and water these more easily yeah. than that garden the big garden down there so we'll do that um we have moon and stars here and i had i love them i only had two plants which then my friend gave me more and they're down there but when we transplanted these one of them was really uh didn't look like it was gonna make it but it it, it bounced back they're, and they're, they're, as you can see they're rocking it out yeah. can you see them jack so the last time I was out here wasn't even that long ago and I could walk through just a couple days. Yeah. Um, so we have Moon and Stars, Sugar Baby, um, Crimson, Sweet. Crimson Sweet. There's some kind of jumbo, right? And uh, no, that was, Hales, no. Then, with, uh, then we have our cantaloupe melons and we had Hale's Best, Planter's Jumbo. Um, Hmm, I can't remember them I don't all remember now. Either. But anyway, and then we have um, the midget melons, Minnesota midgets, which are supposed to be going up the trellis, but they have to be trained, and I haven't been out here training them. So they're on the trellis and under the trellis and everywhere. But, um, and then over here we have winter luxury pie pumpkins and kushaw pumpkins. Yes. Um, well, all of these are a little droopy. Everything needs water, as you can see. Everything is just 
very thirsty. <laughs> it's healthy, but just needs water. Yeah. It looks really good. We don't have a whole lot of pests out here at this point, so no. that's great. Um, there's some there's some eggs, but every time we see eggs, we just, you know, smush them. Smush them, and then anytime we find a squash bug or whatever, we kill it. And they, we have, this year so far, fairly well manually managed the... Um, Pests. All of the pests. Yeah. We put DE in the garden once. You sprinkled everything. Yes, one time. Back when the green, when the beans were all really little and they started getting some bugs, we put he put DE on. But other than that one application of uh, DE, we've handpicked everything else. When I say we, I really mean the kids, because <laughs> we have eight children, and so we can send, especially the younger ones. They love to get picked bugs. Yeah, and I've picked. Them, you've picked too. Yeah. I haven't. I've I've directed, but that's okay. <laughs> Yep. It works out. Then you can feed the bugs to the chickens and everybody's happy. I'm gonna go across here, but you can see. Look! Oh, oh, it's a baby sugar baby! Oh my goodness. Look right here is another. I'm cantaloupe. so happy. Yeah, I saw that. I was getting ready to show them that. I saw it. And then I saw the watermelon because I love watermelon more than cantaloupe. <laughs> yes, you do. And Derek loves cantaloupe more than watermelon. So we're a match. There's another kind of melon yep, right there. There's a little stripy melon. This is awesome. Like you guys Super have known, exciting. this makes me so happy. Ridiculously happy. I really like the weed barrier, the landscape fabric we put down, because melons are so hard to keep. Like, you see, this is what is this. If this weed barrier wasn't here, this is what the melon garden would look like if we didn't weed it. It's very difficult to weed melon gardens because they just sprawl everywhere. So I really, really, really like the landscape fabric. It works great. Okay, we have an acorn squash, the only surviving acorn squash plant, and I thought it had a baby acorn squash on it, but I don't see it now. Maybe that was my imagination. No, here's one. It's a teeny tiny one. Itty bitty teeny baby acorn squash. And then we found, uh, somehow we missed a melon in a pot. Our cameraman's trying not to fall. <laughs> we missed the melon in a pot and we have it transplanted right there. Uh, we know it's cantaloupe, but we don't know what kind. We found it and it was not labeled, so. Um, and then the kids were telling me we have a couple of these melons that were good size. Right there's these, one. Yeah. They won't get a, well, they'll get bigger than that. Oh, there's one. They won't get a whole lot bigger than that. They're kind of a, yep, they're kind of an individual, personal size melon. Yeah. That's why we planted a ton of them because there's ten of us, and uh, we all like them, and so it's kind of fun for everybody to be able to just get their own. Have their own little their own midget little melon. melon. So, anyway, well, we hope you enjoyed our garden. Um, you can see it's just going crazy. By next month, when you see it, we'll be harvesting even more. So, yes. um, th there are a bunch of channels. Joining in in this collaboration, you can go over to Homesteaders of America's YouTube channel and find the playlist. I'll also link the playlist below, but we really hope that you will check everybody out and enjoy watching our gardens grow with us. And um, hopefully you learn something or you're inspired to garden on your own or just like me, love seeing other people's gardens. And I'm always learning too. It's exciting. It's exciting. So I love to learn, love to see what other people are growing, getting ideas for what I can do better more things to grow next year and also different ways to utilize what we grow different ways to cook it or yeah. preserve it and so anyway we are we are really really excited about this garden and we hope you are too